Who should pay on the first date? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to dive into the age-old debate. Who should pay on the first date? The guy or the girl? This topic really gets people fired up, and everyone seems to have a strong opinion about it. Traditionalists believe the man should pay. It's just good manners. But many modern women don't appreciate this dynamic, feeling it suggests they can't provide for themselves. Others think both parties should split the bill right down the middle as a sign of gender equality. But even that comes with pitfalls. Is figuring out the check awkward on a first date? Or does it set the right tone? There's a lot of gray area and confusion around this issue with valid perspectives on both sides. So in this video, I'm going to walk through the pros and cons of the man paying, the woman paying, and splitting the cost, because there are good arguments for each approach. We'll look at this debate from the lens of changing gender roles, because let's face it, dating is not what it used to be. I'm going to share my personal take on who should pay by the end, but I also want to know what you think. So whether you're old fashioned or progressive when it comes to chivalry, grab your wallet and let's figure this out together. This is one first date dilemma for the ages. One pros of the man paying. It's traditional and chivalrous. Men paying on dates has long been the standard. Many women still expect this as it shows good manners and that he's financially stable. It sets the tone that he wants to take care of her, shows he's interested in impressing her. When a man pays, especially for the first few dates, it displays his interest in winning her over. It's essentially saying, I want to invest in getting to know you better, takes the pressure off the woman. Many women still appreciate not having to pull out their wallet on dates, especially if he suggests an expensive restaurant. Him paying removes the awkwardness or stress, lets him feel good about himself. Men often get satisfaction from providing and being generous to a woman they like. Paying makes them feel accomplished, noble, and appreciated. Two cons of the man paying. It's not fair to men. In today's age of striving for equality between the sexes, expecting only the man to pay is rather outdated. Dating should be a two-way street, sets up a power imbalance. Him always paying can create an unhealthy dynamic where the woman feels dependent on the man, undermining her autonomy. This can lead to obligations, reinforces traditional gender roles, Strict gender norms are becoming less relevant. Both men and women work and earn their own money now. So him paying perpetuates old-fashioned ideals, could be used transactionally. Some women go on dates purely for the free dinner. A man always paying enables this abuse, rather than genuine interest in him. Financial pressure on men. Dating multiple women and paying all the time builds up. Many average young men don't have endless money to impress every day. Three pros of splitting the bill. It's fair and equal. In the spirit of gender equality, there's no reason the man alone should bear the brunt of dating expenses. Splitting it is reasonable, sets a healthy precedent. Beginning a relationship on an equitable note, where both parties contribute, leads to better communication and boundaries shows her independence. A modern woman paying half the bill shows she's self-sufficient. She's not reliant on a man for free things and can stand on her own. Takes pressure off the man. Guys report feeling relieved when women offer to pay their share. It's freeing not being expected to pick up the full tap. Let's the focus be on bonding. When the bill issue is off the table, the man and woman can focus on getting to know each other. The date can be about having fun. Four cons of splitting the bill. It can feel less romantic. Some women admit that having men paying makes them feel cherished. Splitting the cost can seem more pragmatic and business-like. Sets less commitment precedent. A man paying shows effort and investment in the budding relationship. Splitting may indicate he's keeping his options casual. 
The ask can be awkward. Having the who pays conversation before or at the end of the date forces both parties to address finances. This can dampen the mood, may undermine his gesture. If a man asks to pay for the woman, she should let him. Resisting could make him feel inappreciated or thwarted, causes confusion with etiquette. Traditional first date rules often still expect the man to pay. Splitting can leave a murky tone about manners. My take. So as you can see, there are good points on both sides of the debate. In my opinion, the man offering to pay on the first date is fine and even expected, but the woman should thank him and offer to split it or pay the tip. This shows she's not taking advantage. If he continues to insist on paying, she shouldn't argue for that. But then on the next date, she should firmly offer to cover some expenses. I think switching off who pays is the best policy for new relationships. It sets up respect and equality. The only exception in my view is that if the man invites the woman somewhere very expensive or fancy, he should pay. But in general, both parties paying their share is ideal. It leads to a healthier dynamic. Of course, every couple differs. This should be a conversation couples have to determine what works for them financially and philosophically. The key is being open and fair. So those are my thoughts. What do you think about who should pay on dates? Let me know in the comments. I love hearing different perspectives on topics like this. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more relationship advice. Thanks for watching. And that concludes my take on who should pay on the first date. Remember to be thoughtful about setting financial precedents in new relationships. Splitting expenses fairly prevents problems down the road. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. It's a brand new day.